and we will get started here. But yeah, we need to discuss this more for sure. Because I am not going to live forever on this planet. I am going to live forever on other places. So <laughs> plan on it anyway. Okay, y'all. Here we are. Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Roger Paul. And tonight we're going to start a new paper, paper 53. We've gone through this paper before, but we're going to do it in great detail this time. And that is on page, that begins on page number, let me look down here. It's lead BD. Put it on this one. Page number 601.1. It's paper 5301. And uh, we're going to be going through this a little slower than we have before when we've done these papers, but not that much slower because it's this paper's pretty state straightforward. The next one, the problems of the Lucifer Rebellion, will probably take a little more discussion. But this is this is pretty much just this is the way it is. Is this the way it happened? Okay, so let's say a little prayer and we'll get started. Father, thank you for bringing us together tonight. Thank you for this wonderful revelation. Thank you for these friends and family that come and listen to this each week to both of our meetings we thank you for all those many many people that uh, have been listening to our videos online and that sort of thing on both youtube and facebook and vimeo and we appreciate everybody that comes and listens and the comments they leave sometimes we thank you for all of our many blessings we say this in the name of your son michael jesus of nazareth amen amen amen, amen. And I'm going to let my wife get in the door. So who's next after her? Rodney, would you take the very first paper there? Yes. All right. Paper 53, The Lucifer Rebellion. Lucifer was a brilliant primary Lenonitec son of Nebadon. He had experienced service in many systems, had been a high counselor of his group and was distinguished for wisdom, sagacity, and efficiency. Lucifer was number 37 of his order and when commissioned by the Melchizedeks, he was designated as one of the 100 most able and brilliant personalities in more than 700,000 of his kind. From such a magnificent beginning, through evil and error, he embraced sin and now is numbered as one of three system sovereigns in Nebadon who have succumbed to the urge of self and surrendered to the sophistry of spurious personal liberty, rejection of universal allegiance and disregard of fraternal obligations, blindness to cosmic relationships. And this would be proper, properly labeled as cosmic insanity. Okay, and we're as we talk about this, we're going to understand why you would label this as cosmic ins insanity. So, first of all, let's go through his background. He was number 37 seven, uh, of his order uh, of 100 of the most brilliant of his of his other Lenin on decks. And here's a, a picture of this. He was one of the, the number 37 of the top 100 at a 700,000 altogether. Let me go back up here. Okay. And uh, what's interesting is the fact that uh, for 500,000 years, he was noted as one of the most brilliant leaders during, of his groups. Okay. So the everybody thought Satania was very fortunate to get Lucifer, you know, as, as a system solver. So he started out in the right right area you know he had all the 
good training he needed. He was created perfect for the job. Now, when we have talked about perfection and the different amounts of divinity and how some types of divinities are 100% perfect in some things and not as perfect in others, and we discussed this last week in our, in our other classes, and this is a perfect example of that. He may have been created perfect in, let's say, two aspects of administration and running the universe. But in the other areas, he was not created perfect because he was an experiential being. Okay. Being a Lennon Dondek son, he was he experienced things just like we experience things. And so what happened is he started to fall in love with himself okay ego and over a period of time this egocentric person or being started falling in love with himself to the point where he stopped believing in the hierarchy of the universe and we're going to see this in the Luc lucifer manifesto is when we get to it a little later on yep pam well i was just thinking perhaps they didn't ask him the question about what do you think about rebellion or some significant questions. And maybe he didn't have any idea of that at the time. Well, he, he did, because Pam, because there were two previous rebellions in Nebadon before him. Okay, so they say that they're not sure what put the idea of rebellion in Lucifer's mind other than being pre two previous rebellions, and they were both Lennon on deck rebellions also. Okay, so <laughs> it may be a defect in the order of sonship, it may not be, but uh, they say in this paper that they feel that the idea of rebellion was original with Lucifer himself. Ooh. Okay, so, you know, him being in, in charge for 500,000 years, pro he may have had the idea of rebellion before the first two rebellions even took place. You know? Mm. Yeah, Rodney? Can we know, uh, Lenontech sons do not, are not given thought adjusters? No. There's no, so they nothing... don't have the spirit of the father within them? No, they don't. But they are free will. They are free willed, and they do have the influence of just like all other beings of the Holy Spirit of the local universe, right? right? Well, they would have to. Yes. But, uh, also, obviously, uh, Lucifer, uh, none of the Lenon deck sons in this universe, Nebadon, uh, existed before. Michael and the Mother Spirit created this universe. Yeah, yeah. Because he was, he was created. Yeah, he was created just like we are created. So right? he would be considered a creature. He's considered a creature just okay. like we are considered a creature. And an interesting part of this, let me say hello to uh, Knock Alex and Ken I see he, you're watching from Kenya tonight. I try not to read the the things while I'm teaching because it distracts me, but I like to say hello to people every now and then when I see it. Uh, but the the fact is that he since he was created just like we are, he is an experiential being, and he kept one of the reasons he was complaining in, in the, the rebellion is because the Lananondex sons as rulers of systems and planets and that sort of thing do not get the opportunity to do the ascension plan and go on to paradise. Correct. So he had never been to paradise. He had never stood before God the Father. He had never gone through the experiential things that normal humans doing and part of uh, the Lucifer Manifesto, it is obvious he was jealous of the mortals that got to go through this process. One of, his, one of his complaints is the fact that they spent too much time on mortals training in administrations of the universe. 
Well, I think not only that, but uh, with all these mortals going through the system, right? Going through, just traveling through. Also, the finalitors coming back, right? Because uh, he witnessed that as well. That's right. He saw these these beings coming back, and one of his complaints is they came back to planets just like we will eventually with no greater glory than they had when they left you know he thinks there's some kind of you know you're supposed to come back to some great you know uh, reward yeah celebration or something celebration or you know congratulations of your work or something it's not the way it works you know it's a functioning unit and that's one of the things about this liberty that we're going to study in great detail when we get to the next paper that the liberty that beings have, okay, he's he w kept saying that he wanted to give all the creatures of the universe personal liberty, and he, but he failed to realize in order for all the creatures of the universe to have p personal li liberty is they happen they happen to have the of control within the cosmos and the universe in an orderly universe. If everyone just does anything they want, then what do you have? Chaos. 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 That's right. He wasn't willing to earn it. He wasn't willing to earn it. That's correct. Right. So that was that was part of his gripe about everything. So when he started this concept of the the he he was the being the god of personal liberty, he was full of garbage. You know, yeah. it just doesn't work that oh, way. Well, one more question. Yeah. Uh, once uh, a universe such as ours, Nevadon, reaches light and life. Yeah. What uh, do the system sovereigns stay? Um, well, would Lucifer ever be granted to receive a thought adjuster? Would a Lanana deck son yes. ever be granted to receive a thought adjuster and ascend? Well, let me let me answer this with a statement that's in the book. Okay. Okay. In the book, it states Jesus states to Lucifer himself that he already had the liberty that he sought. Okay. And that all these other things that he was looking for, he would receive in the future. Well, there you go. So if that's the case, then probably the plan of God is once everything, I'm leading all over the place today, dear. Um, the plan of God is that once the universe reaches light and life, many of these beings will be released to start an ascension plan just like we did. Okay. okay. Think, of, think of the Adam and Eve's. Yeah. Our Adam and Eve has already been released from the core of the Adam and Eve's, and they are considered mortals now mm -hmm. because they defaulted. But by becoming mortals, they automatically start their ascension plan. Right? Okay. So that's a perfect yeah. example. Yeah, Pam. Why do you think that he didn't know that information? Well, I'm sure he did. Well, I'm sure he did to a point, Pam, but not in detail. In other words, the celestial authorities gives you enough information to fulfill your destiny, okay, to do your job. And they don't over, it's called over revelation. They don't over reveal things to you to put those things in your way of progressing at your own pace. So probably some of the information is held back from these beings until they act it's time for them to actually experience them. Right? Does that make sense? So the things that Lucifer wanted, he would get into in the future, but he wanted everything now, plus he wanted the worship of all the citizens of his uh of Jerusalem That's... and the system, right? The system sovereign, okay? So the immediate thing he asked for is the worship from all beings uh, 
to worship him on the mount in Jerusalem. Okay, so he was asking for something that only God the Father receives. Does that make sense? Yes. And so that's why he denied the existence of God the Father, because if he accepted the, ex the ex existence of God the Father, he cuts his, himself out of the po possible worship of the citizens. Okay, and then one more thing. Yeah. And then uh, he was, um, the only reason he could rebel was because Michael was not sovereign of Nebuchadnezzar. Of the, that's yeah. right. But Michael was sovereign uh, in the name of his father, right? Of God the Father. Mm -hmm. So he, he did not earn his full sovereignty till till he came to this planet and finished his final bestowal. And that was 200,000 years after the rebellion started, okay. right? So you have to get the time period done. For instance, for the first 300,000 years or around 300,000 years from when Caligasta came to the planet to the rebellion for the first 300,000 years or 200 and something thousand, they were all loyal to God the Father, okay? And so until they actually de declared they, they're going into the rebellion with 36 other planets, there's 37 in total. When they joined the rebellion, at that point, almost 300,000 years has gone by. And then after that, until the time of Christ came, was another 200,000 years. So you're talking 500,000 years, right? Since oh the beginning God. of administration. Yeah, Pam. Um, so of all those planets, was was he the director of all of this and he expected all these people to worship him? Yes, th that's Lucifer, right? I see, yes. He, he made the planetary princes of all those planets God of their planet. Okay, that was their title. So as God of their planet, he required all those who followed him in the rebellion to worship him on on um, Jerusalem, okay. Yeah. Now, interesting so point. Interesting point. Before I forget it, too, is only one planetary prince went into rebellion, and every single being on that planet would not follow, and that ah. was the Panoptians. Okay. What was it? The the Panoptians. And I think that's the way you pronounce it. But they are the beings that were put in charge of the prison worlds because they were loyal, even though their planetary prince rebelled. But they were much advanced. They yeah. were much advanced, too. And so that's that's kind of interesting. So even though they were put in the, uh, they were quarantined just like all the rest of the planets, they still stayed loyal. And so that's why the, they decided to put the Panoptians in charge of the, the, the father's prison worlds. Wow. Okay. Yeah, Gary, Wait. what were you going to ask? It, so what you said was like Kalagaska would have been considered worshipped as God of Earth. Of that's Eurasia. what he was asking for. Yeah, that's right. And all of Earth and the other planets would worship Lucifer as God of God, or right. God of Capagas. Like God the planet. Father, right? Huh? That's, that, like God the Father. Now, it's interesting that Lucifer conceded to the fact that, that Jesus, or Michael, was his creator, his creator father. He conceded that, okay? But he did not feel that he should rule over him because he was his father. Mm -hmm. So, basically... He didn't have a lot of common sense. Well, if you think about it, it's not a lot of common sense. And he totally uh, denied the ancients of days. He said he called them foreign potentates. In other words, knowing that the, only the ancients of days had the authority to go pick up spiritual beings or marantia beings and declare their annihilation that it was only the ancients of days that did that. So he denied the ancients of days right to do that. 
And he said, if all the angels and all the mortals would stick together, they wouldn't be able to do that, which he was wrong. Mm -hmm. right. So a lot of information right here to start out, right? But so that's good. Okay. Yeah. That's good. But that gives you a background of uh, what we're basically going to talk about. Okay. And this is a slide. I don't know if y'all can see this well enough, but I'm going to try to kind of... Uh, See if I can read that. Can you read that, dear? Uh, I, I can read it. Can you? Primary. Barely. Yeah, read, read, read the primary one first there. Okay. Primary Lenonidex. Um, primary Lenonidex of the highest rank. Wait. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of the highest rank, there were 700 and 8,841. These are the sons designated as system sovereigns and assistants to the supreme councils of the constellations and as counselors in the higher administrative work of the universe. Okay, so remember that there's a hundred thousand system sovereigns, okay? Because there's a hundred thousand systems in the local universe of Nebadoth. Okay? So they're talking about these are primary that are assigned to 703,841 at this particular time. Now, this is the reason it's lower than the hundred thousand is why? Because because <clears throat> Nebadon is still being created, okay? So many of the systems have not even been started yet. So Michael and the local universe mother spirit are still creating these, mm -hmm. okay? All right, and the next order beneath them, right, let me see if I can read this, secondary Lennon index on this order among emerging from the Melchizedek's were 10,234,601, and they are assigned as planetary princes to the reserves of that order. So this is the secondary Lananondex who end up being the planetary princes. Okay, and that's why there's 10 million of those because there's going to be 10 million in, in inhabited planets sooner or later. Okay, and that includes the reserve course. All right. And then there's the tertiary Lenin index. Let me bring this up here, see if I can read it a little. Oh, I can read this one better. The tertiary Lenin index, this group contained 1,055,558. These sons function as subordinate assistants, messengers, custodians, commissioners, observers, and prosecute the miscellaneous duties of the system and its component worlds. And many times on a planet, you will have a secondary Lennon on deck and a tertiary Lennon on deck. Like we had Dalagasha, but actually Dalagasha was a secondary Lennon on deck too. But it could be m multiple combinations of this as planetary princes. Okay. Okay. I, that just gives you an, or a kind of an idea of the volume of these beings out there. There's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. okay? So when they say 700,000 Lennon Index go into rebellion or something, there's still a whole lot more than that. Right? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Let's get back to my wife and let her read a paragraph and then we'll come back to Gary. In the universe of Nebadon, the domain of Christ Michael, there are 10,000 systems of inhabited worlds. In all the history of Lananondek sons, and all their work throughout the, these thousands of systems, and at the universe headquarters, only three system sovereigns have ever been found in contempt of the government of the Creator's son. Okay, so we've had three rebellions in our local universe of Nebadon, okay? So there was two previous ones before this, 
they all have come from the Lenon deck order of sonship, though. Okay. You know, it's funny too, because people say, well, why would somebody of that higher order rebel? You, it's hard to believe, yeah. you know, it's hard to believe. And but you gotta re remember if Jesus or Michael decided to give these beings free will and full full control of their systems the only way he can give them full free will is to allow them to be able to stumble into darkness yeah. makes sense so sure. if, if you have one you get you get the other part of it all right let's go on to the next one uh let's see gary would you take the next one Okay, one, the, the leader of rebellion. Lucifer was not an ascendant being. He was a created son of the local universe. And of him it was said, you were perfect in all your ways from the day you were created till unrighteousness was found in you. Many times had he been in counsel with the Most High of Adentia, and Lucifer reigned upon the holy mountain of God, the administrative mound of Jerusalem, for he was the chief executive of a great system of 607 inhabited worlds. Okay, so when, when the rebellion started, there were 607 inhabited worlds now there's six there were 619 by the time the book was written the urantia book <laughs> okay so that's how many came along after this remember we are 606 of satania so we were the next to the last planet to be inhabited before the rebellion okay because we're 606 of cassette excuse me Satania. <laughs> also says here that L Lucifer reigned on high on the Mount uh, uh, of Jerusalem. This is the Mount of God, the, the holy mountain of God, which is where the administrative surf system uh, of the of Jerusalem is located. And everything that comes from, from the system comes from this mount. All right. But up until the time of this rebellion, he was considered a righteous being. All right. And it says here that he was counseled by the most highs. Who who's are the most highs? They're the Veranda decks, right? They're the they're the constellation fathers. So they kept counseling him that his ideas were being picked up and that he was on a bad trail. He was going down. So they were trying to straighten him out. All right, Pam, would you take the next one? Yeah, Lucifer was a magnificent being, a brilliant personality. He stood next to the most high fathers of the constellations in the different line of universe authority. Notwithstanding Lucifer's transgression, subordinate intelligences refrained from showing him disrespect and disdain prior to Michael's bestowal on Urantia. Even the archangel of Michael at the time of Moses' resurrection did not bring against him an accusing judgment, but simply said, the judge rebuke you. Judgment in such matters belongs to the ascension de uh, uh, ancients of days, the rulers of the super universe. This okay, I universe. want to point something out in this paragraph that people confuse constantly, even in the Bible, okay? And this is, says, even the archangel of Michael, what are they talking about there? That's an archangel that's the, in the direct charge that, that Michael himself is in direct charge of. That's why he's called the archangel of Michael. Probably okay? his first in command. Probably his first command of the archangels, which is a different, totally different uh, type of being. Now, remember when a local universe mother spirit and a creator son goes out to their local universe the first time they are loaned one i think it's 100 archangels from an uh, a close associated 
local universe until they get their own archangels. So when you think of this, the archangel of Michael, this may have been one of the first created archangels for, for our local system of, of Nebadon. Okay. And that may be why he's called the archangel of Michael. He can't, should not be confused with Michael though. And that's what they do in the Bible. Yeah, Pam. Yeah. So who's Gabriel? Gabriel is the chief of all angels. Okay. The first Gabriel, uh, created. The being. first created angel of the universe of Nebadon. And the second created angels are the. Um, Melchizedek. Huh? Melchizedek. No, th oh. they are. They're the. Um, brain fog. Sergeant. No. Brain <laughs> Bright stars and the bright and evening stars, right? Mike, oh, uh, Gabriel is the bright and morning star, and the second order of angels is the bright and evening stars, right? Okay. Okay. They're the first orders under Gabriel. Now, the archangel is a separate order. All the the, the all the other angels are uh, basically support angels for ascendant beings. Okay, the archangels are a totally separate order from Gabriel and the rest of the eight angels. So the you could consider the. Uh, Archangels really part of the the downstepping of the super universe. Okay. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So there's they don't tell us a whole heck of a lot about the archangels in the book, yeah. other than the fact they're they're the ancients of days can use the archangels to go pick someone up. But it doesn't say how they were created, right? No, it it really yeah. doesn't. And at some point, I remember reading in the book a few times that it kind of insinuates that they're created by Michael and the local universe mother spirit, but I would not hang my hat on that because they are loaned a hundred of them from another local universe until the ones that we need for their local universe are either created or sent. I'm not sure. They may create them at that point. I'm, I'm not really sure which way because they're kind of kind of fuzzy about how that happens and trouble is when i start reading this stuff i've analyzed it so many times it gets confusing because i'm trying to read into it things that may not even be there you know what i'm saying oh yeah yeah it's, it's easy i understand but i wanted to point out this archangel of michael because in the bible it re it re, re it gosh it reads as the archangel of Michael, and people think that Michael is the archangel. It's two different yeah. beings. Okay. And here's a perfect example. It said, did not bring judgment against him, uh, but only said, judge, rebuke you, because he was not in the position to judge him whatsoever, even though he was the archangel of Michael. And this was during the time of Moses. And the resurrection. Okay. Why would he uh, say that? Because Moses was resurrected. Well, because normally, at because thought adjusters were not coming to all mankind at this time. This is before Jesus came. Okay, to the planet. So only those that were resurrected were resurrected either on special resurrections or the millennial resurrections. Okay. Okay. And so Moses died in a time in between the millennial resurrections. And apparently it was, it was Michael's wish that Moses be resurrected. So they had a special resurrection for Moses's time. And th that's why, that's why Lucifer objected to it okay so at the same time of my most resurrection is yeah. that error right yeah. and the same thing happened when the the resurrection happened after adam and eve when Ad, adam and eve had died 
Then they had a special resurrection for Adam and Eve and all those children of theirs that had died that would survive. They had a special resurrection for Adam and Eve, and he didn't like that either. Okay, Ooh. so that's that's what they're they're talking about. It, they, he, it, yeah, yeah. He felt like it. They were overstepping their bounds. The magisterial sons were overstepping their bounds and taking these citizens of Urantia away because they felt like that was the purview of Caligastia. No. Okay. So okay. they kind of went over Caligastia because Caligastia had rebelled and there was no planetary prince at that time. Mm -hmm. Makes sense? So they the ma magisterial son stepped in, did the resurrection on the orders of Michael and so um bleeding again over here. Um, so that's that's why they objected to uh, to the resurrection. Can you hand me another one of those tissues over there, Darren? Okay, thank I'm you. These, I'm on these blood thinners for my heart. And well, I, I just, understand. I nick yeah. myself, and it just goes crazy. I don't know how I nicked my ear tonight. Okay, so that's that's what they're talking about here. I just wanted to bring out that Michael because in in the I, I forget which book it's in in the Bible it states the uh, Archangel Michael and it should read Archangel of Michael. Correct transition trans translation thing. Okay, and let's see, Jane. I think you're up next. Okay. <clears throat> Lucifer is now the fallen and deposed sovereign of Satania. Self-contemplation is most disastrous, even to the exalted personalities of the celestial world. Of Lucifer it was said, Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom because of your brightness. Your olden prophet saw his sad estate when he wrote, how are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cast down, you who dared to confuse the worlds? And that's exactly what he did, didn't he? He confused all the worlds under his purview by rebellion. And all, Roger, all this is long before Adam and Eve. This is long before Adam and Eve. Yeah, this was... Uh, uh, exactly, uh, I think it was about 160,000 years before Adam and Eve, because the okay. Ka the Caligasa Rebellion took place, and then there was, I think it was 160,000 years before Adam and Eve came, because that was like 37 to 38,000 years from before. Yeah, and uh, also, Roger, yeah. <clears throat> all this continued to disrupt these planets that were under the rebellion yes. until the resurrection of Jesus. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Now, now it's interesting too, because we've, we don't talk a whole lot about the other planets, but those planets that had their planetary prince rebel, even those that followed him and those that did not follow him all had to have a replacal of those planetary prints. So think about it this way. They had to come up with either 37,000 planetary princes to replace all of these, or they had to come up with 12 Melchizedeks per planet to take over the administration of each planet. Wow. Just like we did. Okay. So that's a lot of Melchizedeks. Yeah. And, and so the things that happen on our planet is just not us. You know, we say, oh, it's woe is me. We got into this. Well, you know, 36 other planets had the same problem. So that's pretty amazing. All right. Let's go back to my lovely wife. Very little was heard of this around the rancha owing to the fact that he assigned his first lieutenant, Satan to advocate his cause on your planet. Satan was a member of the same primary group of Lenanondex, but had never functioned as a system sovereign. He entered fully into the Lucifer insurrection. The devil is none other than Caligastia, the de disposed 
planetary prince of Urantia and a son of the secondary order of Lanamandex. At the time Michael was on Urantia in the flesh, Lucifer, Satan, and Caligasta were leagued to affect the miscarriage of his bestowal mission, but they signally failed. Okay, so Satan, that now we get the order of what really happened. See, we know about Satan because he tempted Jesus, right? But Satan was his first in command under him, under uh, Lucifer, okay? But Lu Satan was a Lan primary Lananondek son, just like, like Lucifer was. But um, Calagastia, our planetary prince, was a secondary order of Lananondex. And so our concept of the devil and the stuff that's in the New Old Testament, and all when they say the devil, they're talking about Calagastia. Okay, so that is who the devil is. Now, Belzebub, who was also in the Old Testament, was the head of the midwayers that rebelled. Okay, and that's it, it, and he did horrible, horrible things, you know, appearing before people and and making people think that these these were de devils and demons and things like that. So, so you had two beings on the planet of major importance that was creating havoc on our planet, and that was Caligasia, the devil, and we had Belzebub, who was the Ooh. head of the midwayers. And we know that the midwares are the beings just outside our sight, but the secondary midwares could eventually uh, make themselves visible. And so that really, scary. yeah, scary. That really made problems. Okay. Yeah. Inter interesting point. Along with um, physical controllers, the primary midwares can also move things also, physical things. So they Roger. could cause a lot of problems up to the time of Adam and Eve. Yeah, Jane. No wonder I was reading, <clears throat> you know, about the ghost and the fetishes uh -huh. and all those taboos. No wonder. No wonder those, you know, prehistoric people. Yeah, no wonder. I <laughs> Can you imagine sitting around the campfire, yeah. you, you know, you're a barbarian, you know, you're trying to get enough to eat, and suddenly a tree goes floating by, you're, yeah. <laughs> or, oh you, know, you know, or one of the animals you just killed gets up and starts to walk around, Yeah, <laughs> you know, it would scare Can the you explain something? Huh? Can you explain something? Yeah. I thought Jesus banished um the Lucifer Rebellion well, he uh, did. on Mount Hermon yeah, he after did. he was baptized or before he was baptized. He did, yeah. but all the okay. demons, all the demons and all the midwares were not removed till Pentecost, so Gary. That's right. Pentecost is when he spent the spirit the spirit of truth. That's right. That's right. So they were messing around. Yeah, and up that, to that up, point. Yeah, up okay. to that point, and then up to that point, they actually had the ability to possess people. Yeah, like people, if you saw the uh, Exorcist, that would yes, have been that, that could have, have been, been true. Then that would have been a perfect example of what something like that would look like. Okay, okay. okay. it's really funny because the guy that that told me to go ahead and read the Urench book was a Methodist minister. And uh, during that period of time, I was still Baptist. I just started reading the Urantia book. And um, The Exorcist came on the movie theater down in Key West. Mm -hmm. And remember. being a good Baptist, we took our signs down there and we protested the movie. <laughs> of course. You know, that, that's what I did back then. You know, we pr protested the movie showing and that sort of thing. But anyway, this mes Methodist minister was my... Uh, New Testament teacher at the college, and he said, "I saw you down at the protest the other night." And I said, "Yeah, yeah, we're, we're protesting the movie." He says, "Well, he says it's really funny after reading your thing in the Urantia book." He said, "That is probably exactly what it would have looked like," you know, which is was kind of interesting to me, you know. And then I've got uh, a question or a comment. Yeah, 
uh, back during that time until Pentecost, when uh, um, when a uh, midwayer, a rebellious midwayer, or evil spirit, would possess a feeble-minded person. Mm -hmm. uh, I, there's nothing really said about it, but I can't see them actually coming into their soul. I think what no. they did, possession means almost to be like a puppet master to yeah. control the person. Yeah, and it was only those who had... Externally. Well, they had dysfunction in their actual brain, you know, mm -hmm. for that to happen. Weak mind. A weak mind, yeah, that sort of thing. Mind. And then after Pentecost, the difference after Pentecost is because of the spirit of truth and the thought adjusters. You remember that right. not only the spirit of truth was poured out on all flesh, but every human being that had made a moral decision up to that point was given a thought adjuster that same time. I just read that. Uh, Jesus was teaching the apostles yeah. that once he returned to the Father, that they would send their spirits yes. to our world. That's right. That's Meaning right. both the spirit of truth and the channel for all the thought adjusters. That's exactly right. So on Pentecost, day after Pentecost, everyone that was available that should have had a thought adjuster who had a thought adjuster. Correct. Okay? They came in mass, in essence. And then... So you're saying that way, you didn't get in a thought adjuster. Jesus... On Pentecost, Jesus sent thought adjusters to us. Yeah, he made it available because of the spirit of truth. The circuit the, was established. The circuit was established for the what spirit. What did the of spirit truth. of truth do? That's the where I'm getting of, The spirit of truth is the spirit of not only the the secondary source and center, the, the eternal son, but it's also the source of Jesus himself or Michael himself made it made his spirit available to in indwell every single human being in his creation. And Roger also, Jesus said the spirit of truth will illuminate the difference between right and, and wrong. wrong. That's right. To be able to see ah, it. That's why it's called the spirit of truth. That's yeah. why it's called the spirit of truth. And it's interesting too that we don't realize this, but the spirit of truth is the spirit of Jesus indwelling us, just like the thought adjuster, the spirit of God. Correct. Okay. So you have two major spirits, the eternal son and the eternal father, indwelling you all the time but jesus's spirit is superimposed in that or they're in, superimposed within each other which makes jesus available to be in every being everywhere before that he Correct. could not do that why because he was a single personality creator that's right OK, and as a single personality creator, he could not be in more than one place at a time. Mm -hmm. OK, so what the spirit of truth did, it allowed him to be in everywhere at the same time, like God, the father. And it's interesting, in order for that to happen, we miss this point a lot. In order for that to happen, he had to go through the local universe mother spirit circuit for the Holy Spirit. That's right. So you can't have, as since Pentecost, you can't have the Holy Spirit without the spirit of truth. That's right. Right? So the we have the Trinity within us. We have the Trinity within us. That's right. Because we know that the local universe mother spirit comes from whom? The third source and center, the infinite spirit. Right. You see how it all works? Now, all this couldn't happen before Pentecost. Why? Because before Pentecost, you had to make a specific request for the spirit of God to indwell you. Correct. Okay. 
You know that prayer of acceptance we've been reading? Mm -hmm. That's a perfect example of asking for the Spirit of God to indwell you. Yes. You follow me? My prayer is that the will of God be my will. Well, the Spirit doesn't dwell you, but to make you conscious. Of, of that dwelling. That's right. Yes. Makes sense. Now, the other thing is, too, since we're talking about devils and demons and that sort of thing, the reason that, that uh, devil and demon possession could not happen after Pentecost is threefold. You want me to tell you the three parts of that? Yes. Mm -hmm. First of all, God the Father sent the jester to every single mortal being. That's the number one thing. When a being is indwelt by God the Father, no other personality can indwell them. Amen. Okay? So you couldn't have another, you couldn't have a spirit take over you. That's right. Second, the spirit of truth is the shield to keep all evil influences outside the human psyche. Amen. Okay. So well, the we, human but... psyche is protected by the spirit of truth, just like the thought adjuster protects your brain because it's protecting your soul. That's right. Okay. So that's number two. Number three the Holy Spirit, who was here before all this, okay, but was kind of impotent because it didn't have the action potential that having the Spirit of Truth and God the Father with it to keep things from indwelling people. So it was kind of impotent about the protection, even though it could give you the spiritual influences all the way up to today, up to Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 So it's a different type of spiritual influence where you can think of it as this. God, the father protects your mind and your soul. God, the son protects your psyche and part of your brain, I guess you could say. And then the, the Holy right. Spirit protects your mind through the mind spirit of the infinite spirit. Right. Make sense? Okay. And all three of them superimposed on a being makes it impossible for devil possessions to happen. Yeah. Now, what is it we see on TV and all these places where these priests are trying to cast out devils? What is that then? Exorcism. Exorcism, right? What no, no, it cannot be. Cannot be. It's a mental problem. It's a dysfunction of the mental capacity capacity yeah. of that individual it's its, it's own debased tendencies coming out that's right okay in other words that it basically is like a uh, criminal saying ah the devil made me do it in seriousness right exactly yeah now it's interesting because the urantia book states it this way that no being could be possessed by an evil spirit unless it was invited in by that individual. Mm. Okay? So even today, if you start to worship Satan and you start to worship Caligastia. Lucifer. Huh? Caligastia. Caligastia, right. The devil. If you start to worship darkness... What are you doing? You're inviting right. the evil into your soul and mind, and it can be devastating to you. It's darkness. It'll it's kill darkness. your soul. But right. but along with what you said, that if if you have a thought adjuster, another can't come in. They can't come in, but you have free will, right? So you can choose to embrace evil. That's right. Even the thought adjuster right. will not keep you from embracing evil as if that's your willful choice. But if it gets bad enough, the thought adjuster will actually leave you. That's right. You become now, what? You... you become the walking dead. That's uh, right. A zombie. Now, 
Can you say Lucifer, get out of me? Yeah. Or Cat Caligasca? Yeah. Who, you know, it's, it's the same concept, right? You can say get out of me, but you shouldn't ever get to that point to it's have true. to do that. You know, why? Because we have parents. Your parents are supposed to train you. Your parents are supposed to teach you about the thought adjuster. Your parents are supposed to teach you about the spirit of truth. Your parents are supposed to teach you about the Holy Spirit and accepting God as your Savior. It really is a Savior, if you think about it, because without that faith in God the Father and God the Son and Jesus, without that faith, you don't continue on past this life. Amen. Okay, so is salvation important? Yes. Yes. It always has been. Jesus didn't, we die, just for, one, Jesus didn't die. Jesus didn't die for your sins. He died for uh, because that was his job as a creator son to save his entire universe, which makes him sovereign and king over all beings. And so if you call Jesus or you call Michael's name, you will be saved, period. Try. Right. Makes sense? Now you kind of understand why we added this little prayer of acceptance at the end of our, our meetings so that people have an option if, if they've come to that point in their life where they need to have something to say, I believe, how do I, how do, I do this? That's the sure. prayer of acceptance. Yeah. This is the acceptance of God. Make sense? Right. Okay. Make sense? Yep. Everybody with me? Yes. yes. Okay. Are we, yes. Oh, my goodness. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get very right. far, did I? <laughs> Four paragraphs, five Four. paragraphs. <laughs> yeah. Deep, but that's but good. I, I delved deep into it, didn't I? It was good. Thank you. Six. We got six. Don't underestimate yourself. All right. <laughs> Five, excuse me. We didn't read this for right. here. Speaking of our prayer of acceptance, let's uh let's switch over that and do our little prayer of acceptance tonight. Let me find it here. Okay. <laughs> Who's had a chance to not had a chance to read? Um, Rodney, have you had a chance to read this yet? Well, I've read it, but not out loud. Well, okay, Other, well, you, with the group. Okay, well, you want to do it by yourself tonight? Okay. I believe that God is my paradise father, and that only by faith am I saved. No sacrifice <clears throat> is necessary. By the same faith, I became a child of God, and that all men and women are my brothers and sisters. We know the Son of God as the sovereign of our universe of Nebadon as a Christ Michael, Jesus of Nazareth. By allowing the will of the Paradise Father to become my will, I will someday stand in the presence of God. In the name of Christ, Michael, Jesus of Nazareth, amen. 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 All right. Lots of info. Thank you, Just mm. made it right till seven o'clock, didn't we? <laughs> Just barely. It, it was a good lesson. Thank you. Yeah. It was a great lesson. Thank you, Roger. You're welcome. Yeah. You hope to see everybody Thursday. All right. All right. All right. Where we left off. Okay, y'all have a good night. Love you, you too. Love you guys too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.